Hi everyone, as we know, building any PC always starts with the graphics card. In front of us is the Pallet RTX 4080 Gaming Pro OC version. I will be doing a separate video review of this graphics card. While waiting for the modified shrouds for this card to be printed on the 3D printer, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it, because this video will be interesting. This card has 16GB of video memory and performance that will meet the needs of any gamer. However, the performance of this card is excessive for this build. I chose it to show how overclocking on the 12400F processor bus works, so that nothing interferes with us in unlocking the potential of the processor in tests. However, if you are building a system for 4K resolution monitors, there will be no problem. With a focus on processor performance, there is likely to be no problem, but I recommend buying something like an RTX 3080, for example, the GameRock, or an RTX 4070T for QHD resolution. The card is equipped with a 16-pin power connector, and comes with an adapter that requires two separate cables for the power supply unit, and we will use it. We will also see if the cover with this adapter will fit with our today's case, the Deepcool CH510 Mesh Digital. This case is interesting because it easily accommodates a three-section water cooling system at the top and comes with a set of dust filters, magnet-mounted glass, built-in graphics card holder, and decent cable management. You can see it on the screen, as well as a built-in monitor that displays the CPU or GPU temperature according to your choice. To do this, you only need to connect the USB connector to the motherboard and download the program from the Deepcool website. The downside of the case is that you need to find additional fans as it comes with only one 120mm fan. Without much thought, I took three Arctic 140mm fans, specifically the PST version, as they have the ability to connect fans to each other in a single chain. But there is one caveat, I couldn't fit three 140mm fans on the front of the case, only two. However, I don't think this is critical, if you want three fans on the front, it's better to take three 120mm fans. I don't really like lighting, but if you want it, for example, you can take a look at the Deepcool CF120. I chose the Deepcool AS500 cooler because it provides almost the same level of cooling as the AK620. The AS500 is taller and comes with a quiet 140mm RGB fan and an RGB controller in the package. The most important thing is that it does not block the RAM, and if desired, additional cooling for the RAM can be added. Another reason I chose the AS500 is that it does not block neighboring RAM slots, resulting in lower RAM temperatures. We will be cooling an i5-12400F processor with the MSIB 660M Mortar Max Wi-Fi motherboard. Note that only the Mortar Max has a clock generator and the ability to overclock non-K processors via the bus. It is important to remember that the regular mortar version does not have this capability. We will also install the thermal right frame immediately. With this frame, the processor will bend less, resulting in the entire cooler's lid fitting tightly against the processor, reducing its temperature. This issue is present in practically all LG8 1700 motherboards. In the screenshot of our viewer's post, you can see that the 12900K processor without this frame is noticeably bent. A blogger friend of mine had their processor stop working due to this issue. Therefore, I recommend everyone to install this frame immediately to protect themselves. If you have not yet installed the frame, I advise you to do so. I will leave a link for purchasing it in the video description. The power supply in our system will be a Superflower Silver 750 Watt. This oldie easily handled the RTX 3090 an RTX 4090 in my PC until I was gifted a new power supply, though I found a new use for it. Yes, it doesn't have a 16-pin power connector, so we'll be using two 8-pin cables instead. Nowadays, it's almost impossible to find it for purchase, and if you do, it'll be at an outrageous price. Therefore, I suggest you look into power supplies like the Deepcool PQ750 or PQ850. The PQ850 have three separate 8-pin cables, which can safely power any RTX 4080. The power supply has a Sisonic focus platform and is fully assembled with Japanese capacitors. The power supply has already stood the test of time, though it's safe to buy. As for the RAM, I had Patriot Viper 4000 CL19 DDR4 with Samsung B die chips. However, I suggest you save money and buy RAM like the Adata XBG D50 with XMP3600 CL18, two 16 gigabyte sticks. Inside the Adata, you'll find Micron chips, B die or E die, or Hynix SGR. We'll install an SSD M2 NetHack NV5000, 
one terabyte which you can buy on AliExpress for a reasonable price with a buffer and a native radiator. I'll leave a link in the description. Well friends, the case lid closed without any problems, and there was even a small reserve. As we can see, the monitor on the case is working, and it's time to move on to testing. During testing, I'll use two options. The first option is when the processor is fully auto with overclocked RAM up to 3500 MHz CL14 CR1, and the second option is with an i5-12400F overclocked to a bus frequency of 5.2 GHz and the same overclocked RAM up to 3500 MHz and CL14. The RAM timings will be the same in both cases. The first game in our test will be The Witcher 3 Next Gen Remaster with maximum settings, QHD resolution, enabled rays and DLSS in quality mode, and with frame generation turned off. The difference was as much as 15 frames, namely 60 versus 75. And this is not a mistake, I checked. The Witcher responds very well to core overclocking. And keep in mind that here the memory is overclocked and secondary, tertiary, and quaternary timings are tuned. Here, for example, is the FPS you will get on this configuration if you build a PC and never enter the BIOS, scientifically called sitting at stock settings. Only The Witcher, unlike other games, reacts so strongly to overclocking. Unfortunately, there is not such a big difference in other games. Counter-Strike, Global Offensive at 2K resolution and auto settings offered by the system. The final benchmark result for us was 476 frames rendered by the system without overclocking, and overclocking via the bus gave us 525 frames, the difference was 50 frames. Yes friends, 50 frames is not as much as we would like, but it is not bad for a few clicks in the BIOS. Also, it is worth paying attention to FPS drops, which are less with overclocking via the bus, and for many, this is critical. Cyberpunk 2077 with all settings on Ultra, Full HD Resolution, Quality DLSS, and Enabled RTX. Without overclocking via the bus, the average was 101 frames, and the minimum was 42 frames. With overclocking via the bus, the average was 111 frames, and the minimum was 50 frames. The increase was within the margin of error at 2K resolution. But here's what's interesting, without overclocking via the bus, the minimum FPS was 40 frames, and with overclocking via the bus, it was 66 frames. The increase is small, but it exists. Hunt Showdown, at full HD resolution, the game cannot overload the card, but it's not overloaded even on the 13900K, it's a feature of the game engine. We get an average value of 189 frames and a minimum of 105 frames without bus overclocking. System with bus overclocking showed 209 frames on average. I don't think this difference will be very noticeable in the game, but it exists. At 2K resolution on maximum settings, the picture is almost the same, without bus overclocking 186 frames on average, with bus overclocking 210 frames on average. Shadow of the Tomb Raider maximum settings, full HD. We get 211 frames on average without bus overclocking compared to 236 with bus overclocking. By the way, in the case of bus overclocking, we were able to load the video card and reach its limits. At 2K resolution, we get 199 frames on average without bus overclocking compared to 209 frames with bus overclocking. It's also worth noting that the higher the CPU overclock in this game, the more dependent the graphics processor becomes. In other words, overclocking is definitely worth doing, but I wouldn't buy an RTX 4080 for the i5-12400F even with bus overclocking and a QHD monitor, and I'd save up the 13600K for a more comfortable game with the RTX 4080 and older cards. However, if you already have the i5-12400F and a motherboard capable of bus overclocking by an RTX 3080 or RTX 4070T, it will match the processor's power and be more budget-friendly, and our build turned out to be quiet and cool. So that's all for today, and I wish you high FPS and low input lag. See you soon!